Hello, chess fans. Welcome to another episode of Chess Chat, a program brought to you live from the Rollstone Bank and Trust Studio at Fitchburg Access Television. I am George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusett Chess Club at Fitchburg State University. This club, the second oldest chess club in Massachusetts, meets every Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 10.30 in, the, in rooms 144 and 145 of the McKay Complex at the University. And with me, once again, for this episode of Chess Chat, is our award-winning director, Darren Dame of Fitchburg, recipient of FATV's prestigious Boulder Award in 2009, and assisting him uh, in the control room and also doing camera work uh, here in studio, in the Rollstone Bank and Trust studio, is longtime Watch Who's a Chess Club member and fellow resident, Brian Bigelow. And sitting across from me is my longtime associate, trusty colleague, a very active chess tournament player, uh, a, a chess author, a chess photographer, my co-host, Dave Kucher of Westminster. Hello, Dave. Hello, George. Always a pleasure seeing you, Dave. Always, yeah. For every episode of Chess that we've been doing now yep. for many years. As you pointed out, what episode is this now we'll be 191. doing? 191. This is episode number 191 of Chess Chat. Well, Dave, exactly three weeks ago, a major event ended in Toronto, Canada. Yep. And this event, you know what this event is. Tell yeah. our viewers what was the event, a major chess event. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's the biggest, the biggest, okay. most important chess tournament on the chess calendar, which is the candidates. Okay. This is the, 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 the FIDE, can, which FIDE is the World Chess Federation, yeah. uh, the Chess Association, and they held the candidates tournament. Now, tell, tell our viewers what, 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 is a can, what, is a can, what is this candidates tournament? How many players? What was the format? Okay. So yeah. the, the idea of the candidates is they get eight of the best players in the world who yes. qualify by various means. Right. And they play a double round robin. Right. So each player plays the other seven players, once with white, once with black. Okay. 14 rounds, and whoever wins gets to play the world champion. Okay. All right. So I just concluded again, again three weeks ago. Yes. And, and did we actually have a surprise winner? Was there a surprise yeah, winner? Yes. I yeah, I would say it's a surprise because um, I'd say the big there was, there was four players ahead of time. Caruana, who's number two in the world, right. was one of the favorites. Nakamura, who I think is number three. Okay. Um, All right. Well, uh, we're going to be N able... Nippon Niachi. From Russia. Yeah, from okay. Russia. And who, yeah. who else? I thought there was one more. Well, maybe the, those three. I think one of those three was figured to be probably the winner. Well, yeah. We had the two... Okay. But we're going to get to all of them. In yep. fact, what we're going to yep. have, actually, uh, Darren Dame, our director... We're going to actually start with the player who finished last in this event. As mm -hmm. you point out, there were eight players. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and uh, we're going to start with the person. They, they played 14, as you point out, 14 round, fourteen games, yep. white and black with each, each of the other seven players. Yep. So the player who finished last, dead last, with three and a half points, was a player from Azerbaijan, Grandmaster from Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. He's actually, uh, his name is uh, Nijat Abbasov. So Darren's going to show a photo. Here is yep. Nijat Abbasov, born in Baku, Azerbaijan. By the way, uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov was born mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Baku, Azerbaijan. And Abbasov is 28 years old. But tomorrow... We're doing this program uh, on, the, on the 13th of May. Mm -hmm. He turns 29. His birthday is tomorrow, Abbasa. But again, he finished only with three and a half points, and he didn't win a single game. He had, right. he had seven draws and seven losses. He, he was by far the weakest player. Right. And as you pointed out, I asked you, I said, Dave, what is, what is Abbasa's world ranking? And you, you were able to tell me yeah. that he's what, ranked 133, yep. 133rd in the world. Yeah. Right. So he doesn't even make the top 100. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so he had a very good performance in a, a, a tournament. I forget which one it was. Yes. But, uh, uh, but be partially because Carlson is, is completely out of the process. You mean the, world, the former world champion. Former world champion, the number one in the world. He doesn't right. play in the candidates. And, right. Uh, the tour, that same tournament, I think maybe Carlson might have finished ahead of Abasov, but yeah. um, 
Amosov yeah. had a very good tournament. He had a good. That tournament was good. That, that which tournament qualified. Yeah, it, whoever, qualified for the candidates. Whoever came first or the first two yeah. qualified. So just by doing really well in that one very strong tournament, having that one really good result got him got into, him the, into candidates. the candidates yeah. tournament. Okay, which which makes it. Makes it interesting, right? Because you've got this one weak player, yes. weaker. Right. So everybody who plays him, you know, if they get a draw, I think that's like they can, that's yeah, a bad a draw result. Will hurt them. That everybody is. who plays him wants to win. Yeah, exactly. So that changes the nature of the games that get played against that one player. Yeah. So he, but he was able to get seven draws yep. uh, of, of the 14 games he played. Yeah. All right. So now finishing next to last in seventh place actually was a Iranian-born player who now actually. Plays, actually lives in France, has become a French citizen. His name is Ali Reza Farouja. Mm -hmm. Now, Darren has a photo of Ali Reza Farouja, and there he is, a photo of uh, Farouja. He's 20 years old. Only he's 20 years old, yep. uh, and he'll, he'll turn 21 next month. He's mm -hmm. got a birthday coming up in June. And uh, Ali Reza Farouja, he finished with five points out of 14, and he had two wins. Six, lo six losses and six draws for his uh, five points. Mm -hmm. So he, he's actually one of the top players in the world. In fact, his world ranking, I have his world ranking now. Farouja uh, worldwide is the ranked actually, no, 16th. So he doesn't even make the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, he dropped down. He dropped. He, he did yeah. not have a good. He was, high, he was higher than that yeah. Yeah, previously. So his world ranking is uh, 16th right now mm -hmm. as we talk in this, in, in this month. Okay, let's go to the player who finished in sixth place. And that is a player from India, Grandmaster, a player from India, Vidit Gujarati. Mm. Where is the photo? There is Vidit Gujarati, who's 29 years old. And uh, Vidit Gujarati had six points. He had three wins, five losses, and six draws for his six points. Yeah. So, uh, and wh what is Vidit's world ranking right now? Vidit now is in 28th. He's 28th, so he's actually dropped also. Yeah, so his world ranking is 28th in the world, yeah. All right, so let's go now to the player who finished actually in fifth place, who probably is the most difficult name, another Indian player. By the way, this candidate's tournament had three players right. from India, yeah. which is rather, uh, rather phenomenal to have yeah. three yeah. players from India. But here is actually a photo. We're going to see a photo of Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. What? A, that's that's a mouthful right there. <laughs> okay, well. there is actually Ramesh Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, and he's he's eight only eighteen. So he was the there were two young players. I mean, the winner of the tournament, and of course uh, uh, Pragnananda. So uh, and, well, how did Ramesh Babu <laughs> finish in the tournament? Well, he finished with seven points. He had three wins, three losses, and eight draws. Okay. So he had a, num a number of draws, eight draws. Okay, let's go now to the player who was considered one of the, fa one of the actually one of the favorites to win this, yep. uh, and that's an, an American player, uh, Fabiano Caruana. And we've done programs. Yep. We have pr actually presented games, played uh, uh, Caruana games yep. for, on Chess Chat. And Fabiano Caruana, there he is on the left, uh, on the left is Fabiano Caruana, and he is now, I'm trying to look up his age. I think he's actually in his 30s. I will look him up, and he's 31. He's mm -hmm. 31 years old, uh, Fabiano Caruana. Uh, and he's played in the Candace tournaments before. The he's tournaments before. played for the World Championship. He played before. for the World Championship. Yeah, he did. He played, actually, Magnus Carlsen. Right. Yeah. So Fabiano finished in this Candace tournament in Toronto with eight and a half points. He had four wins. Only one loss, though. He had one loss and nine draws. Yeah. He had the most number of draws of anybody. Yeah. Nine draws. So he, he, and he was in it yes. until the very end of the very last game on the last day. So he he drew he drew his with the last round. The last round. Yeah, he drew. Had he, he had, won? Had he won? He would actually tie, actually force a playoff yeah. or a tie break. Yeah. yeah. And he was the yeah. he would have been the favorite to he win that tie break. He would have been the favorite to win the tie yeah. break. Okay. So he came within a hair's breadth. All right. All right, so Fabiano, okay, so now let's go to the player. Let's go to another player who finished with eight and a half, who's listed as coming in third, and that's uh, a Russian who actually won last year's candidate, right? And the one before. And the one before, two, yeah. yeah, two in a row. 
And that's Russian uh, Grandmaster Jan Nepomnishi. Let's see a photo. There's Jan Nepomnishi. And Jan is actually 33 years old. Yeah. And again, as you pointed out, two, two, the previous two years. And he lost last year in, in, for a, in the, in the World When Magnus Carlsen declined to play and defend his World Championship title, uh, the Polish who had won the candidates tournament now was was going to would play Dig Loren. Yep. And Dig Loren won against right. the Pomlishi, yep. the winner of last year's uh, candidates tournament. So the Pomlishi also finished with eight and a half points. But what he did, he had three wins, but no losses. Mm -hmm. He was the only player in the candidates tournament did not lose a single game. But he had 11 draws. Yep. In fact, he had the most draws. Actually, I, meant, I mentioned before that Fabiano had more draws. No. Napomnishi had the most number of draws, 11 draws, and, and, and just the, the three wins mm -hmm. for his eight and a half points. Now let's go now to the player who is listed as coming in second, also with two eight and a half points. Uh, and that's actually somebody we, we have presented on Chess Chat numerous times, is he, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, mm -hmm. who was the, old, was the oldest player. Oh, He's, really? Yeah, 36 years old. The oldest player, 36 years old. And... Uh, he finished with five wins, two losses. That was costly. Mm. Two losses and seven draws. So, uh, that, so we had three players who finished with eight and a half points. That yeah. was Fabiano Caruana, Nikaro Nakamura, and Napoleon Yeah, right. But they all finished a half, half point, point. Yep. behind the winner of this year's FIDE Candidates Tournament, and that is Gukesh Domaraju. And Darren has a photo of, there is 17-year-old <laughs> Gukesh Domaraju, who, by the way, as I said, is going to turn 18 at the end of this month. Yeah. Yep. So the youngest ever to the win The youngest the ever to win a candidates tournament. And he is now scheduled to play the current world champion, Ding Liren of China. The, they're scheduled a match, a title match, uh, uh, for November 20th to December 15th. The World, World Chess Federation, FIDE, does not, has not announced a site for this. So I, 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 it remains to be seen where this match is going to be held. Yeah. It's going to be a 14-game match. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, the, 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 the conditions are the same as last year's candidates, 14 games. They play a time control of 40 moves in two hours, followed by 20 moves in one hour. And and then there's actually uh, uh, the then there's actually 50 I think 50 minutes for the remainder remainder of the game. They have 50 minutes, yeah. And there's incre there's also an increment time control uh, increment on this also. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, those are the eight players. And again, congratulations to Gukesh Domarajo, yep. 17 years old, the youngest player ever to win the uh, the candidates tournament. And again, uh, and, and uh, we, 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 we congratulate him very much. Absolutely. A yeah. big, 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 big upset. All right. Now, you were able to select actually a game from the candidates tournament, which I found, I'm glad you picked this up because it's probably one of the best games from the event. Mm. An incredible game. Yeah. And our chess chat viewers have to see this because I, I couldn't believe myself. When we, when we reviewed the game, I said, this, this game, we have to show to our chess chat viewers. Yeah. This is a game that uh, uh, Ramesh Babu, uh, uh, Pragnananda. We'll, we'll call him Prague. We'll call him Prague. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah I'm not going to give his full name. He's, he's known as Prague. He's known as Prague. Yeah. And he played against Guk and, and, and his opponent's name is Gukesh. Gukesh. Everybody knows him as Gukesh. They don't even use the Domaraju name. Right, right. They use Gukesh. This is Prague with white. Here he is. Uh, 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 this is the game, yeah. Yeah, Gukesh, uh, Gukesh is on the right, right? He had black, yeah. the black pieces. And Prague is on the left playing the white. And this was played actually very early in the tournament. Round two. And there's a reason why yeah. these t two Indian players are playing early in the tournament because the rules require the players from the same country, federation, have to face each other early. As early as possible. Early as possible. Right. So this was actually played in round two, right? A round two of the candidates. So, what did what did actually Prague play for his first move against uh, Gukesh in the uh, candidates tournament here? So Prague opens with d4. Okay, a very good opening move. We've, yep. We have presented that numerous times on Chess Chat, uh, and uh, Gukesh responded with d5. Okay, 
So we have a, a, basically a Queen's Pawn opening Queen right pawn now. Opening, yep. Okay. So how did uh, 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 Prague continue? Just waiting for the move on the screen. Oh, yes. We, we, our, we viewers, our viewers can see it actually on, on, right. on their, their home, home set. So Prague follows up with C4. Okay. Now he looks Very like he's standard. offering a pawn. Offering. So in, if uh, black takes the pawn, it's called the Queen's Gambit accepted. Okay. So if black actually uh, captures that pawn on C, uh, C4, yep. it's, uh, it's a Queen's Gambit accepted. Yep. Well, what uh, Gukesh did, he declined the gambit. Mm -hmm. There's different ways to decline this gambit. Sure, yeah. I mean, we could, we could play the pawn to C6. That's one way. Yeah. Yeah. But what uh, the, 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 another way is simply to play E6. Right. Okay, so that's what actually what Gukesh played, shutting in, however, sure. right for the time being, yep. this light squared bishop uh, on C8. Okay, now, how did uh, Prague continue here? Or how could he continue? I mean, let's put it this way. He has, he has a choice of moves here, does he not? Sure. Knight, knight C3 is very common. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably probably second most common is this, Knight F3. Yeah, right. And, th and that's what he played. Yep. Okay, so Knight F3 is what uh, Prague played. Okay. Okay, we see that on our screen. Yep. And now, uh, Gukesh plays the knight on G8 to F6. So he develops he develops his knight out mm -hmm. to out to F6. Okay, it is now Prague's fourth move. What is he going to do? So he gonna, apparently, you know, this was the first um, surprise. Um, okay. So I will say some, we we have some comments here from Gukesh. And oh. I, and, I, and I think they were in a post uh, game interview you, or uh, press conference. So you have those comments. We'll, I have these comments. We'll incorporate his yep. uh, Gukesh. Uh, yeah, so, this, his comments. so Gukesh said um, after he played G3, he said, I guess I was a little bit of a surprise because he said he doesn't play the Catalan often. And that's what this is. If you play the pawns to D4 and C4 and throw in G3, that's called the Catalan. Oh, Catalan. Okay. And so that's not something that uh, Prague normally plays. So. Oh, so he's so Gukesh was surprised by this. A little bit surprised, yeah, and probably he, he didn't expect this. Probably not completely prepared, right? And as we'll see as we go, that um, for quite a while Prague was completely prepared, had uh -huh. was moving just instantly. So he was moving faster than Gukesh was, right? In the opening here, all right. So what Gukesh did in response, he played the bishop to b4 check. Okay, so the king is now checked. And we've got to block the check. White has to block the check. And, of course, there are different ways to do that. Right. Uh, but uh, what did uh, Prague choose as a defense? Knight to c3. Knight c3. Okay. All right. So, now, here's a position where actually black could castle here now if, sure, if, yeah. he, if he wanted to. Yeah. But Gukesh did not do that. What Gukesh did... He captured the pawn now yep. on c4. D takes c4. So now he's a pawn ahead right he's now. Pawn ahead. Yeah. All right. So he's accepted. The, he's, it's a delay. He's delayed the, the acceptance of the gambit sure. until now yep. on the uh, fifth move. Okay. It is now Prague's uh, sixth move. How does he continue? So having opened the space on g2, he puts the bishop there. Fianchetto's it. Okay. Bishop g2. All right. Well, there's no reason why Black doesn't castle here, I and mean, that's what he did. Yep. Black castles, Gukesh castles on move six. All right. It is now a Prague seventh move. Mm -hmm. How does he continue? He also castles. Okay. So this is all, and this has been played <laughs> yep. Yep. thousands, hundreds of thousands of times before. This is not new territory. Yep. Yeah. This is all standard, standard play. All right. Now here is where uh, uh, Gukesh now plays the knight to c knight to c6 plays the knight to c6 is it not on the seventh yep. move? Yep. Okay. It is now uh, uh, Prague's uh, eighth move. What does he do? Um, so he plays a3. It's what we call putting the question to the bishop. The bishop has to decide. Right. Is it going to exchange? Is it going to withdraw? What's it going to do? All right. So uh, what? What Gukesh played, he retreated the bishop. Mm -hmm. he, he's not going to. He's not going to take the knight on c3. Right. He's going to hold on to that dark squared bishop, and bring it back to e7. Yep. Brings it back. Bishop e7 is his move. Okay. All right. 
It is now Prague's uh, ninth move. How does he continue? So this, this is described by uh, a commentator on uh, chess.com as a sharp gambit line. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, it says it's a common concept for the Catalan and the Queen's Gambit accepted. And it says was apparently prepared in depth by Prague. And uh, oh. Gukesh said, um, he, he said, I checked, but I couldn't remember. He said it was a very dangerous line. And so he, at this point, he took a lot of time for his next move. For his next move? He, he knew that this was tended to be a dangerous line. And so he really took his time here. But he was really not that familiar yeah, with, right. with how, how does one ha but, but Prague was very familiar. Prague so. actually was playing f f very, quickly. very, fa very yeah. quickly. So he was all ready for this. So he had prepared this. Yeah. Yeah. Where Black uh, d had, to figure, had to figure this out. The, yeah, preparation, what, the opening preparation that goes on at that level is just staggering. Right. All right. Well, what, what Gukesh played here in response to E4, he played the pawn to A6. Yeah. Now, is this actually in preparation? Is this support actually possibly advancing this B yeah, pawn? Yes, right, yep. It looks like the, it's, yep. it's, a, it's a support uh, move for B5. All right, now it is actually Prague's 10th move. How does he continue? So he needs to develop his bishop somewhere. He puts it on E3. Okay. Develops Helping it to, to defend right. the pawn on D4. All right, and, and Gukesh now carries out his plan yep. uh, after playing A6 to play the pawn to B5. So now he has actually defending the pawn on C4, which is not under the pawn attack. And, and giving the bishop yes. a way to develop. Yes, because this is the problem bishop. Yeah. This bishop has no future along this diagonal, yep. the C8 to, to H3. Right. There is where the future lies. So he actually, no, not, yet. Not, nope. yet, not yet, because it actually is now, uh, it's White's it's move. White's move, yep. Yeah, so it's actually Prague's move, 11th move. What does Prague do here? So he plays queen to E2. Yep. So now his, his rooks are connected and he's ready. To, I, you know, it looks like to get his rooks behind and just yeah. open up the yeah, center. It, vac it vacates, by bringing the queen to e2, it vacates the d1 square for this for rook, rook actually yep. to move over to the d file. Yeah. And yep. uh, add, add more, more defense for the pawn on d5, possibly with the so, idea of advancing that pawn. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Supporting the advance here. So now uh, Gukesh now does uh, deploy the bishop on c8 to b7. So he's now along along the, along the along the di diagonal. All right, it is now uh, Prague's twelfth uh, move. What does he do? He takes the rook on the a file, puts it on d one. Okay. Getting ready to so he's got lined up with Black's queen. And by the way, he's developed all his pieces. Yep. With that move, the last piece he's brought into play is now all pe all of White's pieces are now fully developed. Yep. Yeah. Yep. On on those squares. Where, where black is still behind, behind this work on A8 still stays here, yep. right, it's undeveloped. And the queen. Yep. And the queen also, yeah. Two pieces undeveloped. Queen on D8 yep. and the rook on A, A8. All right. Here is where Gukesh now plays uh, the knight to A5. So he sings over here, which actually puts, oh, boy. Do we have an attack with that move? Yeah. Don't we have the bishop and knight attacking it's the pawn, pawn on twice. e4, which is only yeah, which is right. attacked twice, it's yeah. only defended once. So how is uh, uh, Prague going to handle this? What he what he did on the 13th move is what? Yeah, exactly what we are saying. Yes. Saying he's got the rook behind and he's just opening up the center. All right, so he advances the pawn to d5. Okay. All right, it is now actually Gukesh's uh, 13th move. Well. So he, he can uh, win a pawn here, right? Because he's attacking this four times. It's oh, only yeah. defended three times. So okay. he's, yeah. so yeah. white is offering another pawn. That's he's already right. sacrificed one. He's offering right. a second pawn. He, absolutely. However, here, so this is what okay, uh, uh, Gukesh plays. He captures that pawn. Yep. E, the E pawn, E takes D5. That's his move. So now he's up two so pawns. Now he's up two pawns. Right now, right yeah, now. two pawns right now. Okay, so uh, what does Prague do in response to this? Uh, 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 so he has a very nice move. Yeah. So now he plays e5, kicking the the knight off of that square. He's getting ready to, yeah, attack on the king side. The knight has to has to move. Yep. Under attack. All right. Uh, okay. So I see the different squares the knight can move to. But what Gukesh played, he he, he retreated it back to e8. Yeah. Knight to e8 is what Gukesh played here. Okay, it is now uh, Prague's 15th move. 
How does he continue? Now, this next move is rather an interesting move. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this this comes with a with a comment from from Chestnut County. He plays oh, really? e, e six. All right. And, so yeah. So uh, and the the commentator said that. Uh, well, but he's says, offering another. Is another offering pawn a third. So a third. So he's offering a third. A third pawn. pawn which. Well, yeah, but right. the amazing thing is, he said, so this is opening up the opponent's king. He says all of this was blitzed out. By, by as Prague. confident as you can imagine, by Prague. He, he, yeah. So it says Gukesh was already heavily behind on the clock, taken by surprise, and it seemed as though Prague would score a crushing victory straight out of the opening. Yeah, yeah, right. So Black thought that he had two moves, and the one that he chose turned out to be a novelty. So apparently this has come up at least a couple times in the past. Oh, oh really? This position. All right. So this is not the first time. But, but you know, Gukesh... Didn't know it, and so he had to think here, and uh, so he spent a lot of time. Spent a lot of time, and the move he came up with never was played before. So this is a novelty. This was a novelty. The opening it's novelty. Called a novelty. Yeah. All right. So he did not take. He did not take the pawn on e on e six with the f pawn. Correct. So he advanced the f pawn to to f five. So now right. that was uh, Gukesh's novelty, playing. That was uh, his novelty, and he said that. Um, Gukesh said that after he made this move that Prague started thinking, uh -huh. which he said meant... He slowed, uh, slowed down Prague now. Which he said meant that it probably wasn't a great move because uh -oh. it wasn't in his preparation. <laughs> yes, right. So he said this probably wasn't the best move, but yeah. anyway. All right. It's so a, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy position. It's, it is a crazy position. Yeah. I mean, he, again, uh, Prague, uh, Prague given and Sack had given up two pawns. He tried to give up three. He yeah. tried to give up three. It was declined. Gukes declined that third pawn. Yeah. All right, so now it is actually Prague's actually uh, 16th move. Yeah. How did he uh, respond? So uh, here comes the knight. Knight to e5. All right. Okay. Knight e5. There's this big hole here that he can put his oh, knight yes. on. Oh, yes. Actually, sink, he could sink that knight into f7 yeah. and attack the queen. Yeah, for yeah. one thing. All right, so this is where Gukes now plays the knight on e8 to f6. Knight f6. So he now... Actually gives more more space. Actually, more space uh, for the queen if it comes under attack. With the sure, knight. Yeah. if the knight sinks in, yes. Uh, however, it is now Prague's moves. Move seventeen. What does he do in response to uh, Gukesh's knight of six? Uh, move seventeen. So, so Prague, Prague plays queen to c two, and Gukesh's comment was that he had completely overlooked this. Oh, he really? Did not consider this at all. All uh, right. He, he said that he, had, I guess, he had looked at like bishop coming here. Yes. He looked at this bishop, bishop coming out H3, to here. Bishop H3. Or even thought, you know, he might do the obvious thing. Or come in, the right. bring, sink the knight but in he, F7. He, did not, he said he didn't look at this at all. Yeah. So he, he said he's, you know, basically he wasn't sure if that was the best move, but he said it's certainly an interesting move. All right. Okay. So, of course, now the queen is now attacking the pawn, the pawn on f5, for one thing. Uh, yeah. But what, uh, what the Gukesh played here in response to queen c2, he actually added further defense, this pawn on d5. See, I'm looking at this pawn on d5, which is, again, defended by the knight on f6 and the bishop on, on b7, as well as the queen. Yeah. But what Gukesh says, he's going to add further defense of that pawn on d5 by playing the pawn to C6. Right, and he's, yeah. he's he's completely, you know, ignoring the fact that this yeah. this is attacked. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's not okay. going to defend the pawn with, like, with G6, right. which would make him weak on the dark squares here. That would be not good to play G6. And allow, actually allow the bishop possibly to go to, to H6 sure. to attack on the rook. Yeah. So instead, Gukesh plays C6, putting, making it, defending that D pawn sure. more. Yep. Uh, all right, so now and, it's, and it's interesting. So now, now Gukesh is offering a pawn. They're, yeah. they're just giving pawns That's back right. and forth so here. That's right. So now Gukesh says, "Okay, I'm not defending the pawn on f5. Do you want it?" And he and he and takes he, it. And he takes it. All right, exactly. F5. All right, so he takes it there. All right, it's now Gukesh's 18th move. How is he going to continue? This this is a tough position for Black. Yeah, I, if oh, I yeah. were playing this, I would. Much rather be on the white side. Right. I, I, I would feel more comfortable playing the white side of this, yep. despite being now down, down one pawn. Now yep. it's a pawn, one pawn difference. Uh, but here is what uh, Gukesh played. He played the queen to e8. He's playing over here. Uh, I don't know. And, and he, he, he is commented. There a comment? is there a he thought, on this? He thought it was, that was a slight miscalculation on yeah, his really. own part. He regretted um, playing this? Or, or he, he called it a slight miscalculation. Oh, okay. But it's a very complicated position. Um, yeah. So well, the question is, how does how does White how does Prague continue here in this position? 
It's his 19th move coming in. What does he do? Uh, 19, move 19. Move 19. So he now does sink the knight into f7, like uh, we said. Right, exactly. Now that knight just sits there. It sits there. It's, can't right. be touched unless you, know, you want to give up the exchange by, right. by taking with the rook. But Okay. Well, Gukesh now sees, okay, well, now with the knight, knight sunk in on f7, he brings the bishop. He realizes that there's no, there's, but the pawn is doing yeah. its defensive duty right, right. here. Yeah. So it's now time to bring the bishop back to c8 with the idea of possibly snapping the, the pawn on e7, which will allow this queen now or, or the rook to take, get, uh, 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 win, win, uh, right. take back. Right. And the material would be even. He'd get his pawn back, but he would eliminate that nasty knight right. on yep. seven in the process. So after bishop e c8, what does uh, Prague do on move 20? So now he brings the other rook into play. Yes. F e1. Right. Because he, he would like actually to be able to defend that pawn. If he were able to move that bishop on the e3 right. out of the way, he would be defending the pawn. Yeah. Uh, but of course, that would still allow. Uh, the, he could still c capture on e6 and still win that knight. Uh, but what the rook on uh, uh, say the rook is on e1. Here is where uh, Gukesh plays the knight back to F b7. Okay, because the knight had had no futures staying on the rim uh, of the board like that. All right, it is now. Right, so one one thing he's, I think he's thinking is maybe just getting his knight yes. here to, to swap that up. He yes, that would for yes, right. That that, 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 that is right. That knight's a problem. That's the, that's the, that's the plan to bring the yeah. knight to d6 and attack the queen and the knight and get rid of that knight on f7 yeah. altogether and also get the, get that pawn get that pawn right. on right. Uh, on e6. All right, so after knight b7, it's Prague's move. How does he continue? So move I just have a comment from Gukesh. He just said that this was he thought this was a clever move. I'm, I honestly can't tell you exactly why, but he thought that was a clever move by Prague. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, it actually well one thing it does it allows the rook now to, to defend the pawn. Uh, but again, that really doesn't help matters because he can still take the pawn and actually get rid of that knight. But of, co of course, if he's going to win the knight, he could get a little spite check uh, before he does that with knight h6. But anyways, here is what happened. After bishop g5, this is the move I like. Actually, when we review the game, this is the move I really like by yeah. Gukesh. He plays the rook on a8 up to a7, yeah. which is now going to allow, actually, this rook actually on this rank to, to be a defensive piece. Yeah. Yeah. It needed, a very much needed defensive piece with the rook on a7. All right. All right that's, you know, I don't think I'd even think about that move. I don't think it would occur to me. Yeah. To no, do that. no. Uh, but again, the, the rook had very. The rook only had two squares to go to. It had no. I, I see no future on b8. Yeah. But the, I see there is a, a thing where that rook could be brought brought over. Uh, yeah. Uh, once the knight is no, it's knighted, a, it's a clever knight, move. Knight, knight there. All right. So after rook a7, what did uh, Prague do on move 22? So he captures captures the knight on f6. Okay. Now I'm, I'm, I haven't been actually watching our screen, but I'm yep. with the moves They're being made here. Yep. It's up to date. All right. So bishop takes f6, and of course, uh, there's uh, well, the only way to take the only reasonable way to take is back with the bishop. Yep. Bishop takes on f6 is what Gukesh plays. All right. All right. So it is now Prague's twenty-third move. What, uh, yeah, right, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's Prague's, uh, uh, now here, this is rather interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this next move actually is, is very interesting indeed. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a tough position, for, uh, but here is where Prague played what? I mean, actually, wh what choices does he have here? I mean, right now, okay, okay, uh, does, he have, does he have much of a choice here? Uh, All right, but well, I mean, I'm not sure what he would do, but this this still is kind of surprising. Um, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it, this it, is this is a very difficult position. Yeah, it's very complicated, and um, the the thing is, from Prague's point of view, he's down upon. He, he wants to, he wants to keep an attack going. You know, if his if his attack falls apart, Black wins. Well, you know. I, okay. All right. So he's he's sacrificing a bishop. All right. So that is a sacrifice. Takes on d five. 
and Gukesh accepts it because he accepts can't. It. First, yeah, right, because he doesn't can't allow you know a, a pawn to be won without any punishment here. Yeah. So uh, Gukesh now accepts the sacrifice. C takes D5. All right. All right. Does he do it because now he's going to be able now to? He's going to be able to play. At least going to get. He's going to get at least two pawns for yeah. this. Right. And, and another piece added to the attack. Okay, right. It does add another piece. Oh, by the way, it's also attacking oh, this, this defender. Now, now we have this threat. So there's a threat of taking here with check, and and uh, yeah. So actually, uh, there is a threat here of knight takes f6 after knight takes d5. All right. So he chooses to. All right. He realizes uh, he'd have, he's going to retreat the bishop. He doesn't bring it all the way back to d8, but he brings it back to e7. That's what Gukesh plays. He plays bishop e7. Okay. And, of course, nothing is gained by taking the... I mean, he could take it. Knight takes e6. But the queen just simply would retake. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and the comment yeah. here is that um, both players at this point were severely low on time. Yeah. So they had played 24 moves. They have to get to move 40 was the end of the first time control. Right. So I guess from this point on, they're both having to play pretty quickly because they had used up a ton of time. Right. Okay. And we should also say that up to this point, there's no, no increment per move or anything like that. Right. So, so at this point, it says they're having to speed up the game. Right. And this is a you know crazy position to have to play quickly from. All right. Now this next move. I hope I got the next move right. Move 25. What did Prague play on move 25 here? Yeah. Please. Queen G4. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. Queen G4. All right. Because we're, I think we had looked at it. So there's the threat of. There is the threat, yeah, of knight h6 check, which would force actually the king over in the corner. Yeah. But of course, uh, I don't know how, what Prague had planned if he had played that. He, but he didn't play that, did he? Uh, because actually, it is now Gukesh's move after queen g4. And what Gukesh played, he played the knight on b7. The D8, he's determined to, 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 he's got a double attack now on the, on the pawn, for one thing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how is Prague going to respond to this? What does he do? And this, you know, in the post-game analysis was, was uh, thought to be the, the losing blunder. Oh, you know, really? That, this move, the, the Prague play now? Yeah, that they're, they're saying, um, you what? know, the analysis showed, I guess, the queen, queen D4 he should have gone there with the you mean attack in the rook here was what needed yeah to be done yeah right an attack here all right um, so that would force actually the uh, although I I can see where the the knight could still come here here attack the queen and defend the defend the the rook but this is not an easy position yeah no and the the point was that if, if he had done this it, things were relatively equal really so that That's if right. if he had played if this, he had played this but but he didn't he played. And again, they're having to play quickly because they're low on time. Okay. Plays knight takes d8. All right. Now, so he t he's taken here. So Black Gukesh has to recapture. He cannot capture with the queen. That would be a big blunder. If he were to take actually with the queen, let's show. Let's see. I get get a, a camera on the on the board here. If he plays queen takes d8, this actually would be a big blunder mm -hmm. because would that not allow? This knight to come to f6 with check with check and the rook check and, the, and the rook would win the queen. Right, yeah, right. so that's why the queen is tab it's taboo to take back. So he's forced to take back with the bishop. Yep. So on move 26, Gukesh recaptures bishop takes d8. Cannot do it with the queen because it would cost him the queen. All right. So it is now. So this is the thing: is when when you're attacking, right. you know, especially when you've given up pawns and a gambit, you're Typically, you don't want to be trading off pieces. The defender wants to trade pieces off. Right, exactly. So this is not what Prague wanted. So Prague plays queen to d4. So now he's now ah. he's attacking. So now the rook, uh, the rook. rook is on attack here. Yeah. Okay. And is it also, is there actually a threat of advancing the pawn? With the queen on d4, we have a, a threat of this at, under attack. But also, isn't this also a, a threat to advance the, the, pawn, the pawn to e7, forking? The two pieces, we have the rook right behind it. So is that a threat? I mean, to play, uh, you know, the, the, he's, yeah. it looks like a okay, threat so to he me. Plays, he plays rook b7. 
So he does play. So he, now he plays. Uh, yeah. So Gukesh now plays in response to Queen Diva. He comes rook, here. Rook, rook B7. I'm sorry, no. He played. Uh, no. The, rook, rook to B7. Oh, I'm sorry. Because the rook is attacked. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. So the rook actually went to B7. Right. Yeah. The rook goes under attack. So he played rook B7. Okay. All right. Yeah. So E7 must not well, work I'm sorry. for some reason. He can't do that. I forgot. See, I forgot about this rook. He cannot advance the, the pawn because the, the rook is here. The rook is on this rank for a reason. Yeah, so that pawn push cannot be done because the rook would simply be taken. Sorry. So the rook under attack is now safe uh, on b7. All right. It is now Prague's 28th move. How does he continue? So rook e4. He wants to get the rook in on the attack. Oh, you mean bring it over the g file like the like the G G file yep. with the threat of mate. Yep. Yeah, if he get, yep. brings the rook over to g4. All right, with the rook on e4, here is where... Uh, Gukesh now plays bishop f6, attacks, attacks the queen. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, so now, now does Prague take the uh, the bishop with his knight on d5? Uh, or, 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 or no. no, he chose not to do that. He, he, yeah, he's... He, he's down material, right? So yes. black has two bishops against the one white right, he, knight. That's right. He, sat, he did sack a piece. Well, so he, yeah. does, he does not want to be exchanging pieces now. Yeah, so. he has to hold on to his pieces. Okay. So queen e3. Queen e3 is actually what uh, uh, Prague played. Yeah. All right. So now, all right. Well, seeing that uh, he didn't, uh, he, he, all right. So he brings the bishop back. Prague, I mean, uh, Gukesh brings the bishop back to e7. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, it is now Prague's uh, tw 30th move, it looks like, coming up. Mm -hmm. How does Prague continue here? How do, yeah. how do we continue with the attack? Yeah. Does he play the rook over to g4, or does, or, or does he have something else in mind? He did not. He's just trying to throw pawns at it, so h4. Okay, all right. All right, so now we uh, have uh, uh, Gukesh's next move, which is queen c6. He plays here, okay? All right, queen c6. All right, all right. Oh, by the oh, by the way, with the queen on c6, now this does support actually uh, 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 supports the defense of a bishop to here to c5 attacking the queen yeah. for one thing. Yeah. So the queen on c6 like, looks like a good move. It is now Prague's 31st move. What is? How does he continue? Yeah. So he's got really got nothing else. He just keeps trying to push push the pawns. All right, so he's going to push the pawn as far as he can. Yeah. Uh, but here is actually where, where Gukesh does play the, the exactly bishop to c5. Yeah. Yeah. The move, yeah. Oh, look at this now. With the, yeah, this is actually looking not too good for white. No. Because especially with this semi-open file with the rook bearing down on the pawn on f2, right. the bishop also sure. bearing down on the pawn on f2, yeah. the queen is forced to move, forced right? Forced to move, goes to Goes to g5. Okay. All right. All right. So now, and of course, this allows Gukesh now to take the pawn on e6 with the bishop. Yeah. He, he bishop takes e6. He takes here. He's got rid. He's finally got rid of that pawn. That was, yeah. Yeah. On, on e6. All right. All right. Now, now look at this threat. We, now, with the, after bishop here, now we have a threat, a double threat. With the brook and the bishop on this move, right. taking here on f2, especially with the with the rook, is could be very nasty yeah. indeed. All right, so it is now Prague's move. Uh, what does he do after so, bishop takes e6? The last desperation attempt goes to h6. A threatening mate. He's actually, well, not threatening. Oh, no, no, the, rook, not, the rook. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, this, that amazing rook is. is I, yeah. How many times I forgot about right. the, the importance of having this rook on this rank, yep. this seventh rank. Def as a defender. Yep. So that's why it was a very important move early in the game when he played rook to a, a, a rook to a, a seven. When did, yeah, what move did he do then? I forget now, for example. It was a while ago. Move, move 21. 21 yeah. Move 21. This rook came up yep. here a, as a defensive piece needed, much needed defensive yep. piece. And here we now come with the move 33 with h6. And here is where uh, Gukesh now plays rook takes F2, and he's got nasty threats. Right. He's actually got a, a actually a right. threatening a discovery check. He could pull this back, winning the check, queen. and win the queen. Win the queen. There's right. there's nothing left at this point. So. So, 
Prague could not find a defense here. There's no there defense. Was, there's no defense. Yeah. I mean, if he were to move his, if he were to move his king, let's say he were to move his king, uh, like in the like in the corner, uh, it doesn't happen, help matters, does it? Uh, because uh, he would just mop up. I mean, he could actually. Yeah, he might. He, you know, I think he might. Well. Yeah. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait a minute. We, we actually no no you know he, 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 he wouldn't take here because the rook would actually come and take back here yeah so but no he would just simply but the thing is he's he's up a piece black is up yeah, a that's piece right, that's right, right now. That, that's the big difference black up, is up a piece, a piece and a pawn so up a pawn and he, so he and, doesn't have to do anything and black has adequate defense here there's no force there's no no checkmate possibility uh, uh, so so here as you say this is where uh, Prague resigned. Yep. After uh, after uh, uh, Gukesh played Rook F2. All right, so this was a thrilling game in round two of this game. Uh, yeah, so we should probably talk about the uh, you know the end of the tournament because it was a thrilling end to the tournament also. Okay, what, what, so, what, what can you tell us? So, so going into the last round, yes. let's see, I guess, how was it? Gukesh was half a point ahead Yes. Right. of what, the three. Do, so there were four Kar players. Nak Nakamura, Karam, Arana, and Napolnishi. Right. Right. He was a half point. Half a point ahead of those he three. He was half a point ahead of those So on three. the last day, any one of those four right. could have won it. So Nakamura was playing Gukesh. Yes. So if Gukesh could have beaten Nakamura, he would have clinched it. Right? Yes. He would have clinched it. That's very true. And, right. and Nakamura himself had to, had to win. Right. So, so Nakamura is just out and out having to play for a win in that game. Right. And they ended up, I, I don't remember the details of that game, but they ended up drawing. Yes. Relatively early on. Right. So now that meant Gukesh was in first. Right. Um, Nakamura was going to finish half a point behind no matter drew, what. But no matter the what. other two competitors, Karwana and Nepo, 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, Either either one of them had to win. They were both. They had to win. I think they said this might have been. This is like an extremely rare thing where both players are playing each other and both of them have to win. Right. To to advance because nobody yeah. cares about second place, right? Right. No. Second place doesn't matter in this tournament. It's only the winner. Although they, it the, didn't matter last year. Right. Because last the, year because the champion. Right. Napoleon won the Kansas tournament last year. Right. If it were not for Magnus Carlsen. Did saying I don't want I don't want to I don't want to defend my title. Yeah. He gave it up, which now opened the door for the second place finisher, yes. Ding Loren. Right. Got in, right. and he actually played Napomnesi right. for the world championship. Right. So that actually is only because of Magnus Carlsen right. declining to defend his title that Ding Loren was able to play the winner of last year's Kansas tournament right. and win it. Right. And of course, uh, I don't know what the odds are now. As far as I would say, Dig Loren has the experience when they play. I assume Dig Loren is going to defend this title. I don't. Yes, he's yes, not going to pull. He's no, not going to pull a Magnus There's no Carlson. question about that. Yeah. No, no. There's no question that Dig Loren will will play play the match. Yeah. But we, uh, but we should say that in the so in that final round, so there was only one game left, which was Caruana and the Pomniachi. Yeah. Right. Both playing for a win, and at one point. It, it's interesting to, to watch the coverage because nowadays, whenever the coverage is done, they have it, they're doing it, you know, electronically, and they have a computer eval bar by, yeah. by the board. And you can yeah. see after a move what the eval bar is doing to say, oh, white has a big advantage, right. for example. So in that game, Caruana did have what was considered to be a big advantage, yes. but it was very, very complicated. And even the commentator said, don't pay any attention to this eval bar. He says, people watching at home think, oh, Caruana's got a big advantage. He's got this in the bag. He's going to tie with Gukesh and have a playoff. They said, yeah. it's super, super complicated. It is not simple. Okay. And, and one of them even, um, what's, what's his name? Um, Danny, Danny Wrench. I Donnie, think. Danny, Danny Wrench. Wrench okay, said, I predict, he said, I predict that in the course of this end game, we're going to be seeing that eval bar go up. And, and down. down. Up and down. He said, this is not simple. He says, you know, for you Caruana fans, he doesn't have this in the bag. Right. This is not easy. And and they did have to they did have to rush quite a bit. They were both in time trouble, which is unfortunate. Yes. You know, they don't have more time to really play out these end games. They had to rush. And yeah. um, so it, it all came down to that. If if Caruana could have won, right. 
He would have tied with Gukesh. They would have had a playoff have the playoff. next day. And he, he had to be the favorite. He, he was the Caruana favorite. Caruana would be the favorite. In and, the you know, and if Caruana went on to play Ding, Caruana would be the big favorite. Yes. So we can say he came that close. Close, yeah. But in the end, you know, he, he slipped up and it was a draw. And right. you could tell both players felt horrible because. Yeah. Because Nepo needed a win too. Either one of them had well, to actually, win. Well, actually, is there actually? I, I think I saw a video. Oh, I'll try. I think I, I'll try. I think I sent a picture. I think we have one more picture to show, which is right after the game. I oh, think wait. we have that. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe. I don't know whether Darren could retrieve that. That was a photo I said we don't need. But oh, I, you said we don't need no, it. No, no, but maybe, <laughs> but maybe as we talk, Darren can go in. Maybe Darren can go into his massive archives. <laughs> And dig up the, the photo of actually. There it is. Uh, there it is. That's right after. All right, so that's let's right talk the, about this. This the, is the, the car right. one on the left. And he had just actually, the game had just ended. Just ended. It was it a draw, draw. Draw. So it meant. And the, the, he, you see the Pumnish's reaction. Yeah. And didn't he say, I apologize? He says, says I'm, I think he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He actually yeah. was sorry. That he actually kept, uh, he kept, he kept, kept Caruana from, from, from qualifying. Qualifying, yeah. Uh, so, so this is a very. Very uh, candid photo. Oh, of, they were they were both. Uh, yeah. yeah, they were both exhausted. They were both, well, and they it, were both in contention. The, uh, right. If either one had won, they, they would have had a they, playoff. They would have had a playoff actually with uh, right. Gukesh. Yeah. And, and, and either one would have been a favorite over Gukesh. Yeah. And, and I didn't see it, but I heard in the press conference afterwards. Yes. You know they. <laughs> yes. They asked the typical question they always say. Yes. Well, we, Caruana. So how are you feeling right he, now? Yeah. And Caruana said, "I feel like an idiot." Oh, really? That what he because said. Because I think he felt like there was a win there. He couldn't see exactly but how the, to do it. But the time, but, he didn't have right. the time to think. But, yeah. but the fact that the number two player in the world says, I feel like an idiot, yeah. makes yeah. me feel better. Because, I mean, how many times have we played and the game is over and you just think, I feel like an idiot. Right. You know? But when the number two player in the world feels the same way. Right, right. Yeah, we've all, fe we've <laughs> all felt that way. Yeah. Now, you mentioned a number, like, a, a commentate, a, there were commentators covering this match. There were different websites. I want to actually, if you could actually let our chess chat viewers know if they wanted to view some of the videos that are available online, they're still available online. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you just go to what YouTube. What would you recommend to our chess chat viewers if they want to go and watch video of, of yeah, some I would, of the. I would say just go to YouTube and type in FIDE Candidates 2024. Or, uh, so they Google that. They would yeah. Google that. And you could find, and the, the different there were different sites where they would be able to see different video. sites, but you could find one for every round. So you know yeah. the, the coverage was typically five or six hours. You can find the entire five or six hour right. video, and you could you know on YouTube you can just jump along and right. Um, and I think there was actually, if I'm not mistaken, there was excellent coverage by Chess India. Chess India was oh, really? another okay. a gr great the India the Indian Chess Federation and Chess India. Had super coverage. I'll bet Naturally, they, did, they yeah. have they had three, three of their players, players yeah. competing against some of the top players of the world, the, the two Americans Nakamura and Carolina, and Nepomnichi, you know, one of the one of the top Russians. Yeah. By the way, when they played in this candidates tournament, actually, they, you'll see on the if they go if our chess chat viewers go to the video, they'll see the players with their flags of the countries they play with. Yep. But the one player who was not allowed to display his flag. Was the Pomnichi of Russia, right? Because of Russia's invasion or at uh, uh, attack on uh, Ukraine, yep. the World Chess Federation has banned any Russian player com competing in tournaments under the Russian flag. Uh, yeah. uh, the p display the Russian flag. Yep. What the flag that is displayed for any Russian player who competes in, in international competition is the flag of FIDE. It's yep. the World Chess Federation flag. That, it can, that is displayed, but no Russian flag is allowed to be displayed at any any tournament in which Russian uh, players compete. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I and again, that will stay. That will remain this so until this conflict. Yeah, it, it, and it, I think that's true for the Olympics too, right? Also the, for the, the Olympics, Russian so. flag isn't shown at the Olympics. No, right? it isn't. Not right. at all. Right. Okay. So, anyways, the uh plays with the with the FIDE, FIDE flag. FIDE flag. Okay. And, and I think another interesting thing to point out is. Um, and it was pointed out repeatedly during the, the candidates. Now, this is the third one in a row yes. that Nepomnichi was playing. Yes. And they pointed out that, you know, the fact that he won the previous two. Right. They said at no point was he ever not either in or tied for first place all the way through the first one. Yes. 
that he won, all the way through the second one that he won, won. and this one, up yeah. until I think round 13, That's, he, was, yeah. either, he yeah. was either in or tied for first place. Right. So, you know, a lot of the commentators were saying, this just seems to be where he shines. This is his, yes. this is his tournament, and, you know, there was a lot of thought that he's going to win it for a third time. Right. And, yeah. and again, he, he also came within a hair's breadth he of did. Uh, qualifying. Yeah. But, so it really wasn't until the 13th round that he was finally knocked out of first place by Gukesh. Well, I hope actually when th this world title match is played in, in November, starting November, with the, uh, Gukesh Damaraju playing Ding Loren, yeah. that we don't actually have the, have the, the, the classical match, the 14-game match, and then a tie. Because if, if, if they are tied in the classical games, the 14 classical games, yeah. they go to rapid games. Yeah. And those rapid games actually are, are game 25. They're, the time control now, instead of playing 40 moves in two hours, right. followed by 20 moves in one hour, they play 15, game 15. Each player gets 15 minutes of, of time uh, with a 10-second increment. increment. Yep. Yeah. And they do four of those, I think. And, right. Right from the, and the increment starts at the, at, at the, at at the start. Right. Yeah, right. And if, and, and, and if, if those are tied, they go to a blitz. If, if the blitz. rapid games, the four rapid, they play four rapid games. Right. If those rapid games are tied, they go to blitz games. Yep. And those are five-minute games. Now we're really cutting the time down yep. to very little time, five minutes. And that's played actually with a three-second increment. Yeah. yeah. And, and again. And lately, that's uh, practically been the rule, right? When yes. Carlson played Karyakin, it went down. It went to, down. Yes, it went to, down to rapid. Rapid. Yeah. When they when he played Caruana, it went down to rapid. Yeah. And then I think um, the last one with uh, Ding Liren and uh, Nipo, Nipo right. I think went, they ended up tied and right. had to go to Rapid. rapid. So. But one thing they eliminated, I, th I don't know whether they ever used it, they've eliminated what we call the Armageddon. The Armageddon they've gotten rid of that now? The, yeah, the Armageddon. Now, for example, if this match, this world title match, has to, has to go to the Blitz games, yeah. we go to the Blitz game, they play, uh, they play two Blitz games. If those if those are tied, they keep playing. They keep playing, keep playing blitz games until to, somebody until comes someone out on gets top. one and a half points. Yep. Yeah, but that will continue. I, you know, Ad uh, infinitum. Uh, yeah. But again, I recall that they were played actually the Armageddon, which means that you give one player less time, but all that player with less time it, gets. Uh, yeah, usually it, it's black gets black, less, right? It's black like, gets less. It all requires if the player with less time. Is able to draw the game. They're declared that, that the winner. He he will win the he will right. win win the game. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not a big fan of Armageddon, yeah, yeah. as you well know. Yeah. I mean, uh, but again, it's used actually, especially used in this state, Massachusetts, in the scholastic tournaments. Oh, really? They use Armageddon Oof. if we if if it's if the thing is not resolved by by blitz games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I, again, I'm I'm glad the world championship match. Doesn't use Armageddon. But it could still come down to Blitz. It, it could still come down to Blitz. So anyways, I want to point out that, uh, the, the, again, once again, we're going to do coverage of the World Championship match when it's played in November, December. November, yeah. we, our, our earliest opportunity will be January yeah, that's of right. 2025. But a chess chat will be right there. Yep. We'll actually have a, a – we'll pick a game. We'll pick actually – we'll try, try to find the best game. Best game. Yep. And not necessarily a short game. I mean, we, in the past, we've done short games. This was a relatively short game, 33 moves. Yeah. But we've done longer games on Chess Chap, yep. like 60 moves. Yeah. But we're going to try to pick, pick out the best game of the World Championship games when, when the match is played. I just hope they find a good site. Again, they're looking for a sponsor. I mean, yeah. the World Chess Federation needs someone to sponsor so we hope our Chess Chant uh, fans enjoyed the, the game that Dave and I presented to you. Uh, our next program, I'll give you a little preview right now, we're going to be doing a coverage of this year's Massachusetts State Championship, okay. the Mass Open, held Memorial Day weekend in Westford. Stay tuned in June for the Mass Open results, the State Championship. We'll be there, and hopefully you'll be with us when we present the, the uh, results of that, that uh, tournament. Bye-bye.